All right, in this lesson I want to evaluate some inverse sine functions and so you have to remember now that our output values are restricted um, that we are the angles are the output and the only angles that we're allowed to use or to have as our output are angles from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 meaning the first and fourth quadrant angles so for inverse sine so we've got our inverse sine graph uh, but what might be a little easier for you to get your head around is the fact that we can only have output answers, right? We've got from negative pi over 2 to 0, which would be in the fourth quadrant down here, and we're also allowed to have angles from 0 to pi over 2, which would be in the first quadrant. What also might help you is just that first row of the sign um, we know that the sine of 0 is 0, pi over 6 is a half, pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. We have these values that we know, but we're actually going to be working backwards, right? We're going to be given a trig ratio, and we're going to find the angle that goes with that trig ratio. So let's evaluate the inverse sine of 1 half. Basically, we want to know what is the angle whose sine is a half. So when we go back to the sine function, I know the sine is a half when the angle is pi over 6, and pi over 6 is in the first quadrant, and I'm allowed to use that value. So the answer to this, first number 1 is pi over 6. So the inverse sine of 1 half is equal to pi over 6. So this inverse sine, the angle whose sine is 1 half is pi over 6. The angle whose sine is 0, is 0. The angle whose sine is negative 1 half. Now remember, sine is negative in both the third and fourth quadrants. We're only allowed to take the acute negative angle because we are, think of our range. Our range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I can have no angles outside of that range. Even though I know that the sine of 7 pi over 6 is 1 half. That would be an angle in here. I also know that the sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Now that would be a fourth quadrant angle, but it's not in the range of values that I'm allowed to have for my answer. I have to have either a positive acute angle or a negative acute angle. Therefore, the angle whose sine is negative 1 half is actually going to be negative pi over 6. So let's do the same for inverse cosine. So again, we know that the, we're going to graph the inverse cosine, and we know that the cosine function is not 1 to 1. And again, we want to take a piece of this graph that is 1 to 1. And so the restricted domain is going to be from 0 to pi. So we're going to take this piece of the graph from 0 to pi. And again, I'll take three ordered pairs. I know that the cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Be that ordered pair right there. And then the cosine of pi would be negative 1. And this, my x-axis, again, is the angle on the original graph. The y is the trig ratio. We're going to exchange those. So now we're going to have on our x-axis we're going to have a trig ratio and on our y-axis we will have the angle. And so I'm going to mark off from 0 up to pi and I think I'm going to make each the scale be pi over 4 so we'll make this pi over 2 and up here would be pi. It just makes it easier to graph. I'm going to go out to 1. We'll call this 1 and we'll call this negative 1. And when I graph my, so my three new ordered pairs are going to be 1, 0. I'm going to have 0 pi over 2. I'm going to have negative 1 pi. I'll graph these order pairs, 1, 0, 0, pi over 2, negative 1, up pi. 
And again, it almost looks like this should be a straight line, but we know we need a couple of extra points to help us out. So let's find out what, well, we know what the cosine of pi over 4 is. That's 0.7. So if I have a new order pair, 0.7 pi over 4. And at 3 pi over 4, I'm going to have negative 0.7. Remember that the cosine of 3 pi over 4, this brings you into the second quadrant. So cosine is negative, so it would be negative 0.7. So our, our extra ordered pair would be negative 0.7, 3 pi over 4. And again, these two extra points are here to help you graph the function, just get the shape. And so, so we've got, you can see the curve. This is our inverse cosine function. We had a restricted domain on the original from 0 to pi. The range was negative 1 to 1. So on our new graph, our new function, the domain of the inverse sine is going to be the range of the original, excuse me, inverse cosine will be the range of the original, and the range of the inverse cosine will be the domain of the original. Let's evaluate the inverse cosine function for a few values. Now we already know that our range of values, which are angles, are from 0 to pi. Our domain is from negative 1 to 1. And so we can look at the graph, but also it helps to think of the quadrants. And so since we're going from 0, our range is from 0 to pi, these are our output values. Our output values have to be from 0 to pi, so they're in the first and second quadrant. So if I want to evaluate the inverse cosine of 1 half, Think of the angle whose cosine is a half, and that angle is pi over, that's pi over 3. Now if I want the angle whose cosine is negative 1 half, it's a little trickier because for inverse sine, it would just be the opposite. It would just be negative pi over 3 because we are allowed to have first quadrant angles and fourth quadrant angles. But when inverse cosine is negative, we're looking at a positive angle that is in the second quadrant. And so our reference angle would be pi over 3. So what angle would be in the second quadrant that has a reference angle of pi over 3? Since pi is 3 pi over 3, our angle has to be 2 pi over 3. So the inverse cosine of negative a half is 2 pi over 3. Let's try, let's try another one. The inverse cosine of 0, well, what angle has a cosine of 0? That's pi over 2. You can look at the graph if you like. You can see that when the angle, when x equals 0, the y value is pi over 2. The angle whose cosine is 0 is pi over 2. Let's try another negative value. The inverse cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2. Now I know, so let's throw in a sign here and hopefully make some sense of this. If I asked you to do the inverse sine of negative square root of 2 over 2, well, you know that the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. But the inverse sine of negative square root of 2 over 2 is going to be the negative negative pi over 4. But remember, inverse cosine, my answer can never be negative. It has to be an angle from 0 to pi. So again, I'm looking at, for this problem right here, I'm looking at an angle that's in the second quadrant that has a reference angle of pi over 4. Since pi is 4 pi over 4, I'm looking for 3 pi over 4. Your answers for inverse sine, if inverse sine is positive, you're going to have a, your answer will be a positive acute angle. If inverse sine, you're taking the inverse sine of a negative number, 
then your angle is a negative acute. But for cosine, your, your, your answers are always positive angles. They're either first quadrant angles or second quadrant angles. Let's do two more. And then in the next function, we'll look, uh, the next video, we'll look at the inverse tan. Let's look at the inverse cosine of 1.2 and the inverse sine of 1.5. Well, since my input values have to be, remember that's your domain, so my input values have to be between negative 1 and 1, then there's no solution for this, um, for this problem because 1.2 is not in the domain. For inverse sine, same thing. Inverse sine has a domain of negative 1 to 1, so I'm only allowed to input values that are between and including negative 1 to 1, so there would be no solution. In order to evaluate inverse trig functions on your calculator, we actually are, I already showed you how to do that in the last unit, um, so I'll leave that up to you when you try some of those homework problems.